Hey, how's it going guys? I hope that this video finds you well as always. Um, in today's video, we are going to talk about genetics and how it is that traits are passed on from parents to offspring, or in other words, from parents to their babies, okay? Uh, this is a very cool and interesting uh, uh, topic, and the reason why is because you can actually predict uh, what the outcome will be for a specific trait. Now, for you to understand, you have wanted to make sure that you uh, pay close attention to this because you have to understand a lot of vocabulary for this. Now, uh, just to get you started, you see this picture, this awesome picture of three really beautiful dogs, and what you see is that there's one trait that they share in common, and this trait is the trait for fur color. Now, uh, they share the same trait for fur color, but they have different characteristics for that trait, meaning that this dog, its fur, fur color is black, this one the fur color will be brown, and this one the fur color will be yellow or orange, whichever color you want to name that. Now, uh, that specific trait, again, you have to remember that a trait is the fur color, while the characteristics or the character will be the different uh, possibilities that you have. In this case, you have three possibilities. Okay? Uh, so, some of the things I need to be able to do by the end of this video, you need to be able to describe the term trait. Uh, you have to be able to explain what homozygous and heterozygous means. These are going to be very important terms that we're going to start using from now on. So I need you to really understand what the differences are between these two terms. That's why I'm underlining this. Um, the next one is to be able to explain that dominant traits are expressed and recessive traits are hidden. I'm going to see how that happens uh, today. Now, the last one is to explain how an organism's genotype affects its Phenotype. So we're going to learn what those two words mean today as well. I need you to make sure that you understand what they mean by the end of this lecture because we're going to use them very, very often. Now, a lot of the things that we're going to talk about, guys, is actually been uh, because of the work of this uh, scientist uh, named Gregor Mendel. So Gregor Mendel was a mid-19th century Austrian monk who was the first person to succeed in predicting how traits are transferred from one generation to the next. So this was a, basically the very first person who studied how traits are passed on from generation to generation because we've always seen that uh, normally parents um, have kids and kids look very alike the parents, but um, no one really understood why it is that this occurs. And so this was the very first person that actually discovered uh, that these are actually passed on because of the genes. Now, uh, he didn't really know what genes were, so in fact, he didn't even know what that term meant at that time. People in, in the mid-1800s uh, did not know what um, chromosomes were or what DNA was. You have to understand that this was later discovered in the, um, uh, the mid-1900s, and, and this was mid-1800s, uh, this scientist was basically the first one to understand that because of genes, um, offsprings are going to look like their parents, but he didn't really know what genes were uh, during that time. Okay, So he actually used peas in order to do his experiments. And one thing that I want you to make sure that you do is that you watch this video uh, before you continue with this video lecture. So I want to go to Schoology, and I'm going to make sure that I link this video correctly in the Schoology bar, so make sure that you watch this video right now before you continue with this lecture, okay? Just to continue here, he used um, a piece in this experiment because he, they obviously reproduce sexually, so pea plants actually reproduce sexually just like any other um, uh, organism that reproduces sexually. There's sperm, there's egg, and uh, there's offspring from the, uh, from the joining of those uh, to uh, gamete cells. So, talked about sexual reproduction before. You have to understand that when there is sexual reproduction, you basically have two individuals that are going to combine their DNA to form an offspring. Half the DNA will obviously come from the mother, and the other half of the DNA will come from the father. And this is what sexual reproduction is all about. It's about combining these two DNAs, half from the mom, half from the dad, to make possible outcomes or possible offspring. Now, the work that uh, Gregor Mendel did was very interesting. Uh, just a little bit of uh, information here, just to define some words. For example, the word genetics. Uh, it is the story of her uh, heredity, and this is how traits are passed uh, 
from parents to offspring and you have to also understand the term trait so a trait is basically a characteristic that is passed on from parents to uh, offspring through genes so a trait is basically a characteristic like for example seed color or plant height or any other type of characteristic that you may think of um, how he did this well Mendel actually uh, used a brush just a tiny brush to uh, get a little bit of pollen from the male parts of this uh, flower into the female part of the flower and that's how he will fertilize the flower and once the flower is fertilized you will obviously have a pod you have uh, seeds uh, and then he will uh, plant these seeds and who will have offspring from those seeds. Okay, so he did this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times to study different characteristics uh, in these plants and see how uh, traits were passed on from uh, generation to generation. So some of the characteristics that he, um, some of the uh, traits that he studied were uh, these right here. There's actually seven of them that he studied. He studied the colors of the plants, he studied the shapes, how tall the flowers that they had. And so on. Um, now, when uh, Mendel crossed plants with different traits, he will assert that the F1 generation, so the offspring from these parents, would show the traits that only one parent had. So, if he crossed, for example, he crossed a yellow seed with a green seed, he will see that all of the offsprings were yellow. And the same will, will happen for everything else. If he crossed a tall plant and a short plant, he will see that all of the offsprings were actually tall. And here it was interesting because none of them were actually short. Now, something interesting um, happened when he did the next generation. So after he did the very first generation, he discovered that all of them were tall. Now, for the next generation, he crossed these two parents, which were both tall. And what he observed is that the generation for, uh, for the tray for short actually came back into the generation. So one every four uh, offspring were actually short and this was very interesting because you can actually see here that from a tall and a short plant you make two tall but if you cross these two tall plants now you have three that are tall only one that is short so he kind of was intrigued um, from this because obviously two tall plants couldn't make a short plant but that's what was happening at that moment so, uh, just to continue here, that proportion of the F2 offsprings were short. So, if you look at the F2, what proportion is going to be short? And the answer for that is one fourth. Now, what proportion of that F2 generation is going to be tall? Obviously, there's three out of four, so the proportion is three fourth. And this is going to be helpful later on. Now, a little more definitions here traits and alleles. The trait, again, we said the traits are characteristics that are passed on to offsprings of the parents through genes. Uh, some examples of these traits are going to be nose shape, hair color, skin color, eye colors, I mean, you name it, etc., 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 ear shape, um, many, many different types of traits that we have. Now, the word allele is going to be the different ver uh, versions of that trait. So these are usually expressed with a single letter. So for uh, nose shape, if someone had a pointy nose, that you could express it with a letter P. Now, if someone had a flat nose, you could express that with lowercase p, for example. Um, if there's another example, eye color, the trait for eye color, well, so brown eyes could be expressed with a capital letter B, while maybe blue eyes could be expressed with a lowercase b. Okay? Uh, now, this is where genotype and phenotype comes. Now, genotype refers to the allele combinations of a trait. So we normally uh, say that genotype are the actual genes of an organism. They're the word, therefore, the word geno. Okay, geno stands for the genes, the actual gene gene combination, the allele combination. So you could have big B, big B, little B, little B, or big B, little B. Now, phenotype, on the other hand, pheno is going to represent uh, the visual characteristics. So phenotype will refer to the actual visible characteristics. Uh, physical characteristics, if you want to say it this way, that the organism has. So, for example, brown eyes or blue eyes. Okay, so know the difference between those two. Uh, back to uh, Gregor's um, experiment, just a little learning check here. I want you to tell me real quick, what are the genotypes shown below? So, the genotype, remember that genotype is talking about the uh, actual alleles. Okay, so about the letters. 
you can see here that the genotypes for the parents is big T, big T, little t, little t, and then for that offspring is big T, little t. Now, what are the phenotypes? The phenotype is talking about physical characteristics shown below. And obviously, the answer for that will be tall, dwarf, or short, and then uh, tall plants for offsprings will be also a phenotype. Okay? Um, now the difference between dominant and recessive. A dominant trait will be a trait that is observed and that hides the recessive trait. So when you have a uh, two different traits, you have a dominant and recessive, the dominant trait will always be observed. So express with that uppercase letter, such as a capital uh, B for brown eyes. So you can say that big B and big B will be brown eyes. Now a recessive trait will be a trait that can, uh, can be hidden by the dominant trait. So this is usually expressed with a lowercase letter such as little b for blue eyes. So if you have an organism that has two lowercase b's, this organism will have blue eyes. Now what do you think will happen if an organism was big b, little b? Well, that big b will obviously be observed as brown eyes, so this organism will not have blue eyes, and the reason is because uh, the big B is going to hide or pretty much step over the little b. Okay, so this organism with big B, little b will have brown eyes. So this was something that Mendel discovered, and so there were some rules of dominance that he was also discovering in his experiments. So, so he discovered that some alleles uh, were dominant and some were recessive, like for example, being tall. Tall plants were actually dominant. Uh, yellow seeds were also dominant. Uh, an organism with at least one dominant allele will show uh, that trait. So that's the example that I just gave you. Now, an organism with a recessive allele will show uh, the trait only if there is no dominant trait. So he observed that when there was a recessive allele, the only way that uh, there could be recessive offspring was if the uh, parents, both of the parents, had the recessive trait. And that's why um, the dominant trait so was going to be observed. The only way you can have a recessive trait is if both of them are recessive. Okay, so for example, green pods um, were actually recessive. Now, just a little learning check here. Um, and this is from Gregor's um, experiment. The dominant versus recessive trait. Yellow seed color is dominant or recessive to green. Now I want you to make sure that you understand this. This is yellow, green. If you cross them, both of them are, uh, the offspring is yellow. So yellow is dominant to green. And green will be recessive. Okay. So the reason is because there's no green here. So. Uh, homozygous versus heterozygous. This is one that is very important. A homozygous individual. So this is a homo means same. So normally a homozygous will be the alleles that are both going to be the same for that trait. So big B, big B, or little b, little b, those two things are going to be homozygous. Now if it is big B, big B, this is homozygous dominant. If it is little b, little b, we're going to call this homozygous recessive. On the other hand, if it is heterozygous, so uh, hetero means different, so this is both alleles that are going to be different for that trait. So it's going to be big B, little b. This is someone that has both of the traits. It has a trait for brown eyes and a trait for blue eyes. But obviously, the phenotype, uh, the um, phenotype will be uh, brown eye colors. Okay. Just a little more practice here before we. Um, Finish this is uh, at, the, at the back of your paper. It says that ho uh, homozygous or heterozygous. Um, make sure that you understand the difference between homozygous and heterozygous. So these two individuals here, this one and this one, are going to be, whoops, kind of skip a little too much. These two individuals are going to be homozygous, while this one is heterozygous. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, guys. I hope that you found uh, this information interesting. If you uh, want to go back and watch it again, please do so. And I hope you understood this information. Make sure that you keep that uh, objective in mind, though.
I'll see you in the next one.